Hello everyone, in today's After Effects scripting tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create an image changing script. And this basically means a script that we can click on a button or an action and it's going to change the image that we see. In today's example, we're just going to create a simple script that goes between five different images and is basically impossible to break. You can use these techniques to build as complicated of a UI as you want and you can use as many images as you want as well. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at how we can create it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new JavaScript file here and zoom in a little bit so we can see better. And the first thing we need to do is create some images, which as you can see, I've done here in After Effects. So I have a folder on my desktop called Previews, and inside of here are each of my images that I'm gonna use. So we have one through five, and we basically just want to be able to go through them. So the first thing we need to do is create a couple of variables for each of our images. Since we're gonna have five images, I'll create one for each. So we'll just say image one, two, three, image four, and image five. And now we need to set these to a file object. So we'll just end each of these with an empty file object and a semicolon. Inside of here, we need to put the path to our files. So inside of here, we just need to have the path to this previews folder and then the name of the individual file. So I'll copy my image one here and inside of quotation marks, we need to have the path, which will refer to the desktop here, the relative position of the desktop, the folder called previews, and then the file name, I'll just paste it in there. And then we'll go ahead and copy and paste this into the next couple. And we'll simply change the name so that it accommodates for these other files. All right, so the next step is to basically make these all into one variable so we can easily cycle through it. So I'm just going to make a variable called our image array. And we'll set this equal to an empty array for now. And I'm also gonna make an image counter. This is gonna help me keep track of which image we're on. And since we're going to be using it to plug into the array, we'll start it at zero and it will go up to four. So inside the image array, we're just going to populate it with image one, image two, and the rest of the images that we have. Now we can easily reference image array index zero, one, two, three, or four, and get any of these images rather than having to guess which image we need from the variable name. Now we just need to go ahead and set up a little UI. You can see how simple this is gonna be. So let's make that real quick. We'll make a new window called main window, and it's gonna be a palette window. And since this is basically just an image slideshow, let's call it what it is and with undefined size. Then I'll grab my main window and set the orientation to column. That way we have our image group here and then our buttons. And then we'll make two groups, one for the image, one for the buttons. So we'll have group one and group two. Group one is going to be equal to our main window and we're gonna add a group and it's gonna have undefined size and position and we're gonna call this our group one. Then we'll set the orientation, which in this case isn't very necessary because we only have uh, one element, but uh, we can set the orientation for good practice. For the image variable that's gonna contain our actual image here, what we're gonna do, we'll just call it uh, preview image, and we'll set this equal to group two, or group one, and we'll add an image. The image will have undefined position and size, and now which image should we use? Well, there's a couple ways we can reference things. We can actually just grab, say, image two right here, and that will work. Or what we're going to do to be more accurate is we're going to grab our image array, and the index is going to be our image counter. And this is going to look inside of our image array into the index zero, which in this case is image one. And later on, we're going to add a function which will check and change the image counter every time we click these buttons and thus changes the image. So after that, in group two, we need to create our two buttons. So first in group two, it's gonna be equal to our main window, add another group, undefined size, and we'll call it group two. And this time we'll set the orientation as well to row. And we'll just make a variable for each button. I like to just call them left and right button. And that just keeps it easy. Each of these are going to be set to group two and we're gonna make them buttons and we'll just say previous and next for their text. And again, for this one, same exact thing and I'll say next. 
All right, now let's just go ahead and grab our main window, center it, and grab our main window and show it and run it. And now it looks exactly the same. The only difference is now these buttons are doing nothing. So last step is to program the buttons so that they will change the image counter number here and then go into a function, use the same bit of code to change the image. So below our window here that's showing, we're going to add onClick functions to both our buttons. So left button to onClick equals a function and our right button as well can be clicked on. So we'll add a function to that. The first thing we need to think about is we're gonna have the range of zero to four as our image counter index. It can't be negative, it can't be above four. So the first thing we need to say inside of the left button click, well, we are starting off at zero and we wanna go backwards, but that takes us to negative one rather than back up to four, which would be our last image. So what we need to do is first check if our image counter is equal to zero, which means that if we're gonna go left of zero, it's gonna take us to the negatives. So if that's the case, we need to set it back up to four and that will make it go back up properly. If it's not zero, that means we can do normal manipulation to it and say image counter minus minus, which will take its own value and subtract one. Say the image counter is set to four, it's not equal to zero, so instead subtract one from four, which gives you three. Hopefully that makes sense. It's just basically a way you gotta make sure it loops back around instead of goes into negative territory. Lastly, we'll set a function called update image. We're gonna call it, and this is just gonna update our image for both of these on click functions here. So below, I'll go ahead and create a function called update image, and this is where our code to actually change the image is gonna be located. Inside of here, all we need to do is grab our image, which is called preview image, and we're going to say dot image to grab the image within it, and we're gonna set it equal to something. Well, we're gonna set it equal to a script UI object, which we're gonna create here, and it's gonna be a new image. So we're creating a script UI object with an image inside of it for a new image. What's the image gonna be? Let's grab from our image array using the image counter. Our image counter has been updated right here, and now it's gonna update it using the image function. So now if I run this and hit the previous button, you can see things are changing just fine. If I hit the next button, nothing is working yet because we need to put in that code. So I'll copy and paste the code from my left button click, and we're just gonna change a couple things. Instead of saying if our image counter is at zero, well, the top end is if it's at four. So if our image counter is at four, it's at the last image, we can't go any further than that. We need to set it back to zero. Otherwise, we need to increment up. So now it should be working flawlessly. We can now go between all the images we have inside of our script here. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for this week's tutorial. Very quick and packed full of information. If you have any questions, of course, leave them down in the comments below. If I went too quick, feel free to ask one as well or go back and check out previous parts in the video. As always, hit the subscribe button and bell icon to be notified of new uploads. And we'll see you guys next time.